there, so I'm going to very quickly walk you through the organization system that I have in place for sequence one. And I want you to know a couple of things. This is done this way because this is the way my brain works. I am very much out of sight, out of mind. And so some of this may be more out in the open than you want it to be. Um, you may not need it to be this visible for you, but I'm just gonna share with you what I've done. And please ignore any kind of background sounds. I'm in the middle of the house right now um, and the kids and the dogs are probably about to come in here any minute. So the first thing that I want you to see are how we organize our memory statement cards. And we use this system no matter what program we are using, whether it's preschool, primer, or sequence one, I get a big fat three ring binder and I get these envelopes. They're not even in there all the way. I get these envelopes from Amazon. So they have the three holes at the bottom and they snap up top. And so this is unit one. And so in unit one, I have the unit one language arts and the unit one geography. I also should have in there the unit one history, unit one and two, but when I put it away, I put it away with unit two because it stayed up there um, for a couple of weeks. And this was our unit one of nature. So since I'm using multiple programs, I have all that in there together. Um, and then our catechisms for unit, our catechism for unit one and two are here. So all of that gets put in here. And as a matter of fact, um, our manners and hygiene statements and our scripture memory from morning virtues for that for the first half would also go in here if I did not have like the ones we're currently using up on the board. So it's just take all your subjects for unit one, put them together, put them in an envelope, boom. And so I do that at the beginning of the year. Um, I put all the subjects that have memory statement cards together in one thing. And then we have those and they're just every week I come over to this, I pull this out, open it up, get the cards that we need and put them on the memory statement board, put the other ones back in their envelope and it is easy peasy from there. The other aspect of the program other than the memory statement cards are the books. There are a lot of books. So let's tackle those really quickly. I have found through trial and error that if we're using a book intensive program, that it's really, really helpful for me to have all the books pulled together in one area. I prefer to do some intense prep work in the summertime and then be ready to go in the fall. No ma'am, no ma'am, ma'am. So right here is our sequence one basket. And so, in this really not even very well organized, like they've literally gotten read and then shoved back in there, but these are all of the history books that we will read throughout the year with sequence one. Um, and then I have on mission over here as well. So if you're using on mission, you might also have those in a thing. 50 Famous Stories Retold is over here right now. So that's, that's what I do. Um, the folk tales are also over here. So I think that it's wise, even if you don't use a basket, maybe if you just have a particular section of your bookshelf, where as you collect the books, as you get the books from the library, whatever the situation is, you put them all in one place. That way, when you're pulling books weekly, you know exactly what area of the shelf they're in. Just go and get them and set them out. And I'm gonna show you two other areas, and then that will be it. Okay, so the second area that I have some of my organization is this table here at where we do most of our read aloud. This is where we do our morning basket. So I think it's really important that wherever you do your morning basket is where you want to have the books at that you use regularly. So we are using obviously the Ology and the Alfred Rex Bible. And then we have our current read aloud. Um, because we did sequence one last year, we've read the just, no, not just so, we've read the 50 famous stories retold already, so we're actually trialing uh, just so stories for sequence two in our family, so you would have the 50 famous stories retold and the fables book over here. 
Um, and then we have another picture book that's just a read aloud. And then we have our menu for morning virtues. And so we sit down here, as you saw in the video, we go through our menu. We do either the Bible or the ology, and we do a little bit of read alouds from the other literature. And that's it. Um, everything lives in this one place. This coffee table actually opens up. I put everything in it when we're not doing school and then I can close it all the way and it stays nice and neat, but it's convenient and it's where it's supposed to be. And I can't lose it around the house because I'm having to move it back and forth. Okay, so here is our messy kitchen table and this is where we do any type of book work that we need to do. Um, and we are fortunate in our table. I actually set out to find a table for this purpose it has drawers in it so one boy has a drawer over there one boy has a drawer over here there are apparently popcorn kernels in the drawer um i guess we're going to grow popcorn plants now but here is his sequent one student notebooks they both have their drawer with their student notebook their pencils they usually have a dry erase marker in here dry erase marker all those things are right there. Those are their tools. And I keep in the other drawers the sight word and spelling deck. So when we're getting ready to do our spelling list, I only have to step down there, grab this out, and go through that. And the sight words are in there as well. On the other side of the table, I also keep the coins that we use for the coin cup on the daily pages. Sometimes I actually have a bag of real coins. I kind of go back and forth. And I have this little kit of math manipulatives. So this houses our um, 10 sticks and our ones. And then it's obviously on hand for any other actual math that we need with our math curriculum. So that is how our home is organized for sequence one. So my primary encouragement is let this be inspiration for you to put things where you want to use them. Like do not hide them from yourself and then forget to use them or be frustrated because you can't find the book that you need or whatever. Wherever you're using it at, make it as aesthetic as you need it to be and keep it where you're gonna be using it at. And for sure, put all your books together so that you don't have a hard time finding those. And prep work for me every week is I change out the memory statement cards, which on a weekly basis, because some are for two units, it's usually like four cards, which I think roughly takes me 30 seconds. And then I make sure that I've got the right read aloud that I want to do. I walk over there and grab a history read aloud. Um, that's my prep work. And then I make a plan for what kind of history activity we're gonna do. I try to do things that we already have this stuff on hand. We've been homeschooling long enough that we have like everything on hand for the most part. And that's it. Like that, I mean, it's maybe 10 minutes. And most of that is me thinking about what history activity do we want to do and making sure that I have those materials. And that's it. So I hope that just seeing how we have things tucked away and the areas that we use them and we keep them ready to go can be an encouragement to you as you brainstorm what's the best way to organize this for your family.